Hello everybody and welcome back to the Free Skate. Today we have the Canadian Championships 2023. Um, very, I don't even, it was so all over the place. Um, first, I want to just say uh, the junior ladies um, look promising. Uh, this is the first time that we've had junior ladies look this promising in a really long time. We had uh, even like short program scores. Uh, we had three, I think it was three uh, scores that were over um, 60 points, which is great for a junior for Canada. Um, usually, uh, you know, we're used to seeing 40s and maybe low 50s. I mean, I remember there was times where the Canadian champion the current year in Canada had like a short program of like 56. I mean, it was not the best. So I think Canada's up and coming uh, with the ladies and um, I can't wait to see what we have in the next uh, few years coming up. But so uh, senior, let's start with the women. So Madeline Skisas is the champ once again. Uh, 196.47 was her score. Um, she actually finished second in the free skate though, so uh, we may have a competition in our hands uh, coming in a year or so uh, from uh, Kaya Ryder. Uh, she won the free skate by a slim margin, um, 129.82 to 128.15, so it was, it was very close, but uh, Kaya has that very, um, she skates free. Um, I don't think she felt a lot of pressure and also too uh she was sixth after the short program and she came up to win the silver medal um and she won uh she won the the free skate now she's seems to be consistent ish um she landed all of her jumps in the free skate uh every element she had was a positive geo granted there weren't huge huge geoes but they were still positive geoes so that is a big big plus for for any skater to have um there was no um under rotations or anything and she did have the triple triple combo and the uh triple um the triple triple um three jump um combo oh my god i'm so tired you guys i'm trying to remember the term of a three jump combo sequence jeez oh my god pardon me um, and third place, you know what? Third place, Fiona Bombardier. Uh, she is a little spitfire too, coming up in the ranks. Uh, 60.52, uh, for the short program in third place and 120.02, uh, third place also in the free skate. And she lands a book, uh, with 180.54. She had a little bit of a rough free skate. Uh, she really fought for stuff and it was kind of funny because the elements that she fought on were like the easiest ones. Um, so it was just... I think she was just having a rough go, but she still ends up with the bronze medal. It was uh, quite handily over Sarah Maud Dupuy, who ends up in fourth place, was 169.56. Allegedly, Sarah Maud is working on a triple axel, so that should be interesting to see if she can put one um, in competition in the next year or so. Canadian women really, really, really need to start <clears throat> uh, training for those big jumps and those big combos because let's face it um especially it's going to be an inevitable that the russians come back but um if canada or anyone really wants to medal when uh, the russians are coming back you're gonna have to put those combinations in whether it be a triple ox let like the minimum absolute minimum with fantastic skating skills or add quads too now uh madeline ski has had a little bit of trouble in her uh, free skate. She definitely uh, uh, seemed to be a fight. She fought through every element, but she did fight through every element. Uh, she uh, and her her pink dress and her her light music uh, was nice to watch. Um, she's still far and away the best skater in the event. Uh, and that shows her senior experience uh, coming up. Uh, so uh, I think Kai Ryder and Fiona Bombardi may be the future of Canada. Uh, Maddie's still really young too, so I guess we'll see how that all plays out too. But I think we're going to have three very talented women that are going to be skating for Canada in the next uh, few years, which is fantastic, fantastic to see. A uh, shout out also to Leah Pereira, second after the short program with 61.21. Definitely did not have uh, the best free skate. She was seventh in the free skate. She only had a 104 points in the in the free skate uh but uh the girl is in pairs too she won a bronze medal uh with uh the pairs like how awesome is that 
um, and she's only been doing pairs for a few months, so uh, you know she's a really strong single skater. Uh, that's uh, that's definitely a good foundation for her pairs, and I really really hope we see more of Leah um, in the upcoming year or uh, two, um, single and pairs. Uh, we already know they're going to have uh, international pairs assignments. I hope uh, Skate Canada can maybe put her into international singles as well. I don't know what their plans are. I don't know if she's thinking of uh, sticking to doing both or if she's going to eventually commit to one. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see. Uh, we've had, you know, skaters in the past, uh, like Deanna Stilato um, and Megan DeHamel have done singles and pairs at the same time or have switched from two. And... Um, it's, it's very hectic, it's very busy, but uh, some people like that. Uh, some people like to focus on one, so it'll be very interesting to see what she does. Um, I have a, kind of an issue here. Okay, so um, Fiona Bombardier, a really bright light coming up for Canada. Uh, here's the thing. Skate Canada is not sending her to four continents because she doesn't have the minimum scores. Um, I... I'm not sure if they dropped the ball with that or if there's another plan or coaches didn't want her to be exposed to more competition, which I would find really hard to believe, um, or if there's inside politics of not sending her previously. I mean, she's obviously going to have to get her minimums at, at some point. But uh, you know what? She is the Canadian bronze medalist. And even uh, at the beginning of the year when she started beating some um, some senior competitors, the Skate Canada should have been like, oh, hey, we see potential in this girl and uh, maybe she's going to do something so maybe we should expose her to more competitions uh, but uh, she, her season pretty much ends here because uh, Kai is uh, going to go do Junior Worlds and uh, Fiona doesn't have any of her uh, minimum so um, I don't know um, what they were thinking with not sending her to many events so the four continent spots are going to go to Justine Miklet and Sarah Dupuy and Madeleine Skizas uh, for uh, four continents so um, I'm also kind of confused on why you would send uh, Sarah Mode and uh, Justine Miklet uh, not to take anything away from them but um, they're not doing anything crazy for Canada, anything internationally. I mean, with all due respect, they're they're not going to win Canada medals. Uh, the clear-cut favorite to win anything in the upcoming few years would definitely be uh, Kai Ryder. And uh, Kai is going to do Junior Worlds. Would you not want to send a Kai to Four Continents as well, give her another international... Um, experience with senior and senior judges and have her exposed to, to senior international ISD judges. Uh, to me, that would be a shoe in of a, a, a spot. You're going to send Madeline, you're going to send um, Kaya, and uh, I don't know who else, maybe either uh, Leah was third in the short program, uh, Sarah Mode finished fourth overall. Um, even, I don't know if Gabrielle Delman's going to be back by the time um, Four Continents comes to her. Training's going really well for her. Could have sent her to give her some experience in the competition before the next season. I, who, who knows? Um, so that just kind of, I don't know, it, it kind of bothered me. Also, too, what I realized was the uh, Autumn Classic uh, this year uh, was cancelled. I didn't really even realize that. Um, and that sucks because that is another event in Canada that's being taken away for skaters to try and get their minimums. It's very early in the year, uh, so sometimes even skaters may not even be ready at that time. Uh, but we need more international events in North America, especially on the, the Challenger circuit. Most of them are in Europe with the exception of the um, the Autumn Classic International, and I think there was one in Lake Placid this year. So the one in Lake Placid um, is going to be switching off with the Autumn Classic. I don't know why you just wouldn't have both of them every year. I don't know why you're switching them again. There's only one event in North America that can count for anything like that. So why would you not have one actually made? And, and while you're at it, while, while you keep both, how about you add another one later in the season? So... We're not stuck, <clears throat> you know, uh, North American skaters aren't stuck um, trying to get minimums at the end of the year if uh, the federations don't have money to send them across the world to Europe to to compete, pardon me. So, 
I don't know what's going on with Skate Captain, but they need to get their uh, their ducks all in an, all in an order here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the programs. <coughs> Pardon me, my throat here. Uh, Leah Pereira, brilliant short program uh, up to that point um, in the competition of the short program. She was clear cut class of the field. Um, she was far better skating skills, power jumps than any other wood, a lady we had seen up to that point. Uh, but her free skate, she missed a few jumps. Um, not sure if that's because she was doing pairs as well, got tired, got thinking, other stuff. But uh, it's a good ex experience for her. Uh, Kaya had a few misses in the short program, uh, leaving her six. But when she was only less than two points behind second place. So it was very, very, very close behind uh, a, a second to sixth um, place. Uh, two... Uh, triple triple combos one was a sequence uh, and a clean skate gave her the win by uh, point but not enough to catch Madeline um, I think she still skates a little bit junior a little bit more simple simple choreography uh, but that's going to be expected to um, start to get a little bit better um, in the next year or two while she um, does gain some senior experience we got to remember she's only 16 she's super super young um, and even with the the Russians that come out with their Bouncy dancy but we're trying to look like their their skating skills are amazing it doesn't always pass off as um, amazing it still comes off as junior um but kaya looks um looks really strong for canada's future um she's gonna have to definitely put effort into bringing up her pcs mark though for sure um, um small goes too she's gonna have to work on the quality and the difficulty of the uh, entrances and exits of different jumps um, and spins. <clears throat> uh, Madeline, great short program, nailing her jumps, uh, nailing her triple triple combo. But you know, in the free skate, a little bit uh, got away from her. She doubled her flip, had balance issues on her triple sal cow, her triple loop. Um, everything uh, seemed like a real fight, but she did fight through it. Um, and she never let the program go completely. So she definitely earned that gold medal. She fought for everything that she that she could have for sure. Um, uh, yeah, so that was, um, and then I'll force, uh, Fiona, uh, she had trouble in her, uh, uh, free skate with her double axles, uh, stuff, but she, she looks to have a really light presence on the ice, really good speed, really good attack, uh, she's got her jumps, so I think she's, uh, much like Kai is gonna have to work on the PCS, uh, marks, and her, uh, quality of actual elements, and, uh, by the way, in case you didn't know, uh, Fiona Bombardi is also Jose Chouinard's uh, daughter, which is super, super cool. Um, I read, it was funny, uh, I read an article the other day that said um, Fiona didn't know her mom was Jose Chouinard, the skater we know, Canadian champion and Olympian, until she was like 10 years old or something like that. <laughs> kind of like came out like somebody... Uh, asked her at school or something and she went home and asked her mom and she's like why didn't you tell me I just found that really funny <laughs> I don't know why, don't, why Jose didn't uh, tell her but maybe uh, she didn't want to intimidate her daughter I feel like there was a lot of expectations uh, or have kind of a step up on her so I just thought that was uh, that was kind of funny <clears throat> the men oh the men oh god help us the men the men the men the men were the men the men were the men that they have been all year. Super unpredictable. What an absolute disaster. Hot mess. Um, Keegan Messing short program was very, very well done. He had 94 points. Fantastic. Another really good short program by Conrad Orzel. Uh, I believe he had 86 points or something like that. Um <laughs> Okay, so aside from Keegan's face plant, also, by the way, too, this the, the guy was super emotional. It's his last Nationals-ish. I, see, I still read a lot of people saying, like, is it really his last Nationals? Like, you're coming into a year where the Canadian, um, or where the Worlds are in Canada next year. Would you want to go out at home? And, like, let's face it, I mean, like, the chances of him like making the world team for next year was probably very very high too given the men like we're so inconsistent it's not even funny like, yeah, Keegan is still the head man in Canada like for sure um it was so funny like going into these nationals you think 
Stephen Goldglove is gonna really push to win his first title. Um, Wesley Chu is gonna give it. We're gonna see him step it up. Roman has a chance to get his crown. Um, and everyone was like, it was like a, watching a train derail each car separately. One by one. It was just an absolute mess. So many ugly pops. There was falls on spins. There was singles. Elements didn't count. I was like, oh my god. And this is the nationals. The national championships with national judges. Goglev. 17th in the short program. He had 49 points. I could debatably get 49 points. Like, maybe not kidding. <laughs> um, under rotated his opening quad. Single axle gives you zero points. Double sow on his combo gives you no points. I think he had like... I don't remember what his PCS score was. Uh, or what his TES score was in the short. I think it was like... 20 points or something or like yeah it must have been two, or 20 or 12 I don't know it was really it was really bad like super super bad uh, poor guy um, but you know what he rebounded Steven Goglev won the free skate 170 points 170 points would have put him 5th at the Grand Prix Final. What the heck? That's crazy. So he went from absolute king of disaster to winning the free skate. And he must be kicking himself for the short program. Because if he would have been half as good in the short program, I, the guy would have ran away with the, the competition. Like he would have beaten Keegan too. Like for sure. Um, three quads. Fourth overall. I mean, good for him going up from 17th to 4th, but man, that short program. You always say you cannot win it with the short program, but my God, you can sure lose it. Unbelievable. Really, truly unbelievable. Um, Roman Sadovsky, not much better. 61 points, single axle, no points. Um, he didn't have his combo, so he got like... I think it was like two points for that element or something like that. So he lost almost his entire element. Uh, so that was a complete uh, disaster too. Uh, free, free skate again, not much better. Huge mistakes. Uh, I don't know what is going on mentally with him, but man, I, you got to get it together. I don't know. He's He's got to get it together. He reminds me of Emmanuel Sandu, where like we all knew that he could skate so, so, so good, but put him on competition ice you have that one like chance to impress people and the judges and you just cannot for your life do it it is crazy because the guy can post literal world class numbers that could rival winning almost any event and then he just falls off the scene in a national event like I don't, I don't i don't understand it one day one day he will blow everyone out of the water. Like, maybe it'll be at Lake Worlds next year if he qualifies. And, like, there's, like, two or three men, hopefully. Or, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I guess there'll be two. I don't think it'll be... Or is it two, three? I don't even know how many Canada spots have. I think it, I think we have two, right? Do we have two? Yeah. Because there's, like, there's one lady. I don't, I don't even know. I don't know anymore. Um, okay, so... What also bugs me about him, too, is, like... He seems, he seems um, very nonchalant in his like post interviews. Be like, oh, we have like a plan, and it just, just mentally kind of got away from me today. But like, it's okay. Like, how many times can you say it's okay though, Roman? Like, it's been a lot. Like, maybe you need to change a sports psychologist, or maybe you need to start seeing somebody, or start change coaches, or I don't know. I don't know. Something, something's got to give because this guy is literally a world class skater and and when it comes down to a, a competition like he, he just can't put it together um, also too okay moving on so um, Wesley Chu 
11th in the short program, 65 points. So we have three out of the top five guys that should have been first, second, third, fourth, and fifth that were not even like on the radar after the short program. That's super insanely disappointing. Um, but Wesley Chu again, free program, pulls up for a bronze medal with 161 points in a free skate, which is a fantastic score. Um, he had his quads. Um, I think he had a small mistake. But honestly, like, West Lab is probably the best I've seen Wesley skate probably, like, literally ever in my life. I don't think I've seen him skate better than that. Um, I didn't even know he was that good, to be honest with you, because every time I've seen him skate, like, he hasn't been that good. I think I've seen him skate more good ones before. So good for him, Wesley Chu. You have won the bronze medal. Uh, Conrad Orzel, though, super most impressive. Um, he wasn't perfect, but it was by far the best he skated and all around in an event. Uh, 151 in the free skate, 86 in the short program. Uh, I think he probably would have liked a quad, another quad in his free skate, and I think he was planning uh, triple at the end of his triple axle uh, to make it a triple triple combo. Uh, but he doubled it instead, so um, I think he probably wants that back. But that's okay. I mean, you definitely like like good good for you, Conrad. I'm so happy he's finally on the men's podium. That took him so long to do. And again, super good looking skater. Uh, made the change to Ravi uh, to and moved to Edmonton. And you know what? It seems working working for him. I mean, Roman, maybe you no know, Edmonton might be calling you. Just saying. <laughs> Ravi seems to be doing well with uh, uh, the guys uh, Matthew Noonan uh, was third after the short program I believe uh, kind of fell off in the free skate a little bit he just doesn't have the elements to compete with the, the big boys yet but again Ravi getting his stuff together with uh, Matthew as well keep it up keep going awesome pairs uh, Delato and Deschamps win their first national title uh, we were wondering what would happen because of uh, Deanna's respiratory infection that she's had for months has been lingering. Uh, poor girl on the in the free skate was just gassed. And, oh my God, you guys, that fall that she had like on her face. Wow, that was a hard fall. She just got right back up and like kept going. Good for her. Like they totally deserve that title. I'm so glad um, they are going to be representing Canada at the World Championships. Um, like, awesome. She's she's like. Our competitive granny of figure skating in Canada is like the mom everyone's going to want to go to and like talk to and get advice from because she's been there, done that. And I just love, like she must love skating so, so, so much because you don't come back and do it for that long when you don't love something. So like good for her. Um, the rest of the pairs uh, are very kind of all over the place right now. Um, not too bad. I mean, the, the whole world pair scene right now is, like, super disappointing. Uh, there's there's not... We have too many top teams that have retired or are not skating this year. And it's just made it super lackluster. And, I mean, even with the, with the Russians being out, the Russian pairs are always so much fun to watch. I think it's a big, big void. Uh, but it does give other teams a chance to improve and uh, gain some confidence by winning uh, medals in different events. Uh, we have our silver medalists uh, with 199.18 over, or sorry, um, 187.26, 199.18 was um, Stilato and uh, Deschamps. 187.26 was uh, McIntosh and uh, Mamar. Uh, and uh, Michaud and Pereira were one uh, were bronze medal. Sorry, I my God, I'm too tired, you guys. I need to go to bed. This is ridiculous. <laughs> um, so Michaud and Pereira um, have only been doing pairs for a handful of months. Uh, we all know that uh, Trent Michaud used to be uh, partnered with Evelyn Walsh, who retired. Uh, they won bronze at the 2022 Fort Constance and were sixth at the 2022 Worlds. So that's their best finishes um, 
uh, for Trent with his previous partner. Um, and it's uh, really a good sign because uh, Leah and Trent have almost already eclipsed uh, Trent's best score already for um, for points. So a few years, you know what? We might actually have uh, some competitive teams. I think they're going to want to aim for uh, over 200 points uh, overall in the next uh, year or so. Uh, hopefully for sure going into uh, a World Championships at home. They're going to really want to push for... Um, the best scores possible. Um, pairs is pretty staggered, I would say, uh, this year. We have, like, our, like, top tier, whereas, like, we've got, you know, the Japanese team and the Americans, and then we kind of have the Canadians mixed sort of in there, um, and then everyone else is kind of, like, way down. Uh, so I think Worlds is going to be super interesting with pairs uh, because I think it's going to be very unpredictable. We have so many new pair teams that will be their first events uh, so it's going to be super interesting um, I don't like the fact it actually bothered me that so many teams opted not to do uh, throw triples or side by side triples this is when you should be trying you need to get those you, you need to you need to be doing them in competitions um, you're a senior level skater you can do triples so do them. Even if you fall, you need to get your reps done in a competition. Don't just do a double and like be like, oh, I'm gonna play it safe. Like it's not like it's not like you're doing a quad and you're downgraded to a triple. Like you're like a double and a triple is a huge, 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 huge difference. You should be doing triples in a senior event. Unless you're like literally a brand new team and you haven't learned them yet. Whatever. But everyone in that event could have tried triples. For sure. So it kind of bothered me that not uh, everyone was doing triples or they decided to opt out. It was kind of like dumbing it down or making people not compete their best for that championship. So that kind of sucked. But other than that, um, ice dance. So it was a huge void with Piper and Paul not ice dancing because their their programs are just to die for this year. Uh, Piper is recovering uh, nicely. They will be back on the ice, so I'm not too worried about them. But um, let's talk about that battle. The battle for first and second was fierce. Lawrence Foley, Baudry, and Nikolai Sorensen, and Marjorie Lajoy and Zachary Laga battled it out. And the Canadiens win their first national title by 0.6 of a point. Free skate was so close. It came down to uh, a one point deduction from each team. Uh, uh, Lawrence Fonier, Baudry, and Nikolai Sorensen, uh, she, she tripped on her dress at, at the end of the program and had a fall. Uh, so that was a negative one. Uh, Marjorie and Zachary had a negative one point because they had a deduction for an extended lift and it ended up being 0.6 of a point. And Zachary and Marjorie do not win the title. Um, in my opinion, I actually would have given it to Zachary and Marjorie uh, mm -hmm. overall. I... I'm not, like, super techie in ice sense, so I don't know, but um, I feel like Zachary and uh, Marjorie have a little bit of a bigger presence. Maybe not quite as much finish here or there, but it is vastly improving, and their scores are super comparable to, um, to Fournier, Baudry, and Sorensen. Oh, Zachary was so pissed. He was not happy that uh, he lost that. You could tell his uh, interview after and his facial expressions. Like, the guy was devastated that they did not win the event. Like, he wanted gold for sure. And he knows that it was an extended lift, a silly little mistake that lost it for them. Uh, it's That's very, very unfortunate. I was a little surprised that the uh, rhythm dance was not closer. I personally love uh, Marjorie and Zach's rhythm dance. Slide to the left, slide to the right. 
It's so much fun. I think it's one of the best ones in the world right now. Period. Other than Piper and Paul. I don't want to sound like too homerism for like Canada. But I think those two are like one of the best ones. And you know who I also like um, is um, uh, Cuban music. Americans. Um, they just pulled out of their own nationals. Um, you know who I'm talking about. Um, Jean-Luc and... Uh, yeah, them. <laughs> um, yeah, so there was... Let's see. Um, oh, yes. Okay, here's my here's my note. I put it in big, bold letters so I wouldn't miss it. Uh, their technical scores in the rim of them were exactly the same. 49.96. We're tied. So it came down to PCS. And, um, yeah. I mean, it came down to PCS. I would have personally put Zachary and Marjorie closer and or ahead in the rhythm dance, and I would have had the money, the event. And no shade to Lawrence and uh, Nikolai, because I really, really, really enjoy the skating. They're very smooth, very nice to look at. Um, but I, I just, I, Marjorie and Zachary remind me so much of Tessa and Scott, like so much. Especially Zachary, he is like, he's so determined, and he's such a perfectionist. And he has that same Scott Moyer presence, like, every time they skate on the ice. And I've said it from day one since they were a junior, before they won their titles in, in junior, that I said they are going to win the Worlds one day. And I still say that one day we're going to see Marjorie Lajoy and Zachary Laga win the World Championships and maybe Olympics. Uh, bronze medal! Um was the once French, now Canadian team, um, uh, Marie-Jade Loyal and Romain Lagac. Uh, they have a very unique style, very creative lifts, very nice to watch. I love how French he is. He's like, he reminds me of like the French restaurant server or date in a French movie that he's just so French looking with his mustache and his accent and he's just oh, oh, and I just love it I love it I love it I love it and his um they're they're Pink Panther they're so animated in uh they're they're so creative their lifts they hit such different poses like I don't even know where they come up with these lifts, but they're super creative. They're really, really nice to watch, and they definitely deserved uh, that that bronze medal for them. So that was the Canadian Figure Skating Championships. Um, let me know your comments down below. Let me know what you think about Fiona's situation and not getting a spot with four continents because she doesn't have her minimums. Let me know what you think about creating more events in, uh, well, not just Canada, but in North America for a Challenger Series uh, or Grand Prix or whatever. Uh, next up, we have the United States Figure Skating Championships coming up this week. So I'm assuming uh, a lot of you guys are going to be watching that. I know I'll be watching it for sure, and I think we're probably going to cover that too. Uh, so until then... Um, happy skate watching uh happy new year to everybody i hope everyone had good holidays uh, and i hope you all have a good night subscribe share smash the like button tell people about me the free skate on youtube and uh we will talk to you guys soon have a wonderful night